So our next final, Song Wan Ho, the former world number one and champion here four years ago up against the number eight seed Kenta Nishimoto in his second Super 500 final this year. Now, as far as the race to Guangzhou is concerned, uh, this uh, final today could be very, very important. We know that the current number seven, Lindan, will not qualify for the World Tour finals. But whoever loses today's final, and you can see that they're currently at eight and nine on that list. If Samir Verma, who is number 12 on the race to Guangzhou standings at the moment, if he were to win in Lucknow, Verma, he will then overtake the player that loses today's final. So eh, there's an awful lot at stake, not only the title here in Hong Kong, but perhaps also a place in Guangzhou at the World Tour Finals. Well, as far as the men's singles draw is concerned, we had five players who had contested a final at the start of the tournament, four former champions, and the only former champion that made it through to quarterfinal stage was Song Wan Ho. The other player who had contested a final is the man we've just been talking about, Samir Verma, who, if he wins in Lucknow, could still qualify for the World Tour Finals. But at semi-final stage, there was two players from Japan, the world champion and world number one, Kento Momota, having a thrilling battle against the former champion who leads out the two players into the ring today. Soman Ho and Kenta Nishimoto. Court officials introduced to the fans and our special guests to make the toss of the coin. Song Wan Ho, the former champion, in his ninth appearance here at the Hong Kong Open. Number eight seed, Kenta Nishimoto, in his third final at this level of tournament. Beaten in the final of last year's French Open when he came through the qualifying and then reached the final of the Malaysian Masters Super 500 event earlier this year. Eighth time that these two players meet each other. And of the previous seven, Son Hall has won five of them, including the last, which was the second round of this year's French Open in Paris. Two straight games it was on that occasion. 21-14, 21-18 in 51 minutes. Thirty years of age now, the former world number one. Total of seventeen weeks as world number one. Currently number six. And when he won the title here four years ago, became only the second player from Korea to win the men's singles Hong Kong Open after Sun Siang Mo in two thousand and one. Well. The match yesterday against the world champion Kento Momota was an absolute classic. An hour and 30 minutes, the longest men's singles match of this tournament. And I know that Sim was watching that and he will tell us a little bit more about it in a minute, but it really was a thriller. 
So to the number eight seed, Kenta Nishimoto, 24 years of age, born in Mia, on the southeast coast of Hongshu, the main island of Hongshu. Has been a couple of places higher on the world ranking than he is at the moment. And this is only his second appearance at this tournament. What a difference a year makes, because a year ago he lost to a Korean, Lee Dong-kyong, in the qualifying draw. So, as far as his path through to today's final is concerned, three games in the first round against the qualifier, Luca Corvé of France, and then in the second round against Wang Chalon, also three games, uh, beat the former world number one and number four seed, Kadambi Shrikant, in the quarterfinal, and then broke the hearts of the home fans as the last remaining home player was defeated in the semi-final Lee Chia Yu of Hong Kong. What a tournament he had coming all the way through the qualifying, all the way through to the semi-final stage. So our court officials, uh, Philip Young Chi from the US of A and Richard Ting from Singapore. So, so one host coach, Agustui Santoso. Interesting that career have used several foreign coaches in the singles, and they have Chen Gang there a while ago. Chen Gang and Li Mao. Li Mao, yeah, from China. They had Tang Kim He. Well, they've been working in Korea for a while, didn't they? Yeah, he was working with the doubles. That's right. Categories. Final stretches before this men's singles final gets underway. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Sun Wan Ho, Korea. <laughs> and on my left, Kenta Nishimoto, Japan. <laughs> Kenta Nishimoto to serve. Love all. Play. So the number eight seed, Kenta Nishimoto, getting this final on the way against the former champion, the number six seed this year, Sumon Hall. Given the head to heads between these two players Service and the five victory to two love. losses in favour of So Man Ho, and uh, given their experience in world badminton under normal circumstances, Dean, I would have said, probably said that So Man Ho was the overwhelming favourite. But that match yesterday that he played in the semi final against the world champion Kinto Momoto, an hour and a half of fantastic badminton. I can't help but wonder whether that's taken its toll. Yeah, uh, I think it must have, but um, we saw that uh, in the doubles, Fukushima and Hirota, they um, played very well, even though they played a long match as, as well, and someone who had a little bit more recovery time as he played in the first session yesterday against Momota. It's good to see someone hold back in a final though, Steen, because it's been over two years since he was last in a final at this level of tournament when he reached the final of the 2016 Love. Denmark Open. It's yeah. over two years ago. Yeah, 
getting back to, to this level of, uh, of play uh, because I think he's suffered a bit um, following his injury in the Malaysia Open where he had to withdraw and withdrew from uh, Indonesia Super 1000 afterwards and sort of ruined his uh, campaign for the World Championship and uh, an Asian Games. So this is the best I've seen him play uh, for a long time. The match yesterday was a very exciting match and he had to use all his skills and all his tactical awareness as well because Momota was playing really well but he was clearly hurt when he was made to do the deep lunges especially on the front court but it wasn't an easy task of exploiting it so it was a very very good match. Yes and just uh, confirm about that injury it was a calf muscle injury wasn't it to someone who that forced him to withdraw from the Malaysian Open. Five, yeah. one. find it a little bit surprising Service with someone who you know former world number one world number one for a total of 17 weeks but when you look at his two, tournament one. wins he's only ever won two super series titles this is his obviously first world tour final that was india in 2012 and then this event four years ago so he hasn't won a major a title all that time and the fact that he's been world number one is a testament to his consistency rather than necessarily his uh, tournament winning capability yes um, it's, it's uh, it all depends on how you want to uh, construct the world ranking and if you construct it in one way you get some results if you construct it in another way you get different Seven, results and then on some occasions, it's, it doesn't really matter how you construct it, you still get the same number one, but, um, but Son is one of the number ones with, uh, I guess, fused tournament victories. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Is, I know it's early stages, Dean, but is, Nishimoto uh, playing the right tactics here? Uh, it's difficult to say. <laughs> Too early? Yeah, it, it, I mean, I think this could be a really long match. It's both, both players are sort of grinders and um, I saw Nishimoto play against uh, Shrikant where he uh, definitely was in, uh, in good shape but the conditions wasn't entirely in favour of uh, Shrikant, to say the least. But, but uh, I think someone who played really well yesterday he must have picked up some confidence yeah. after beating Momota. Lost the four previous encounters against uh, Momota. Nine, so he seemed a bit more sharp. That's also the impression that that I get here in the beginning of the first game. Like we discussed with the women's thing, I actually think you need to attack a little bit more playing this near side of the court. And, uh, the problem is that it's just not the style for any of the players. No, but that's actually why I asked the question, yeah. because I was surprised that it appeared to me that Nishimoto was uh, just no. wanting to play the running game. Yeah. Now it's 10-2 in double quick time, so... Yeah, only six minutes played. Oh, missed opportunity. Service over. Three, 
There's the more attacking play. You're right, Steen. Attacking play, definitely what's needed as far as Nishimoto is concerned. Straight points. Seven, ten. What a difference to this opening game that missed kill at the net at <laughs> ten two <laughs> might prove to be. It's a gift, even though he should, um, if he should uh, go to the uh, mid-game interval. Ten behind Nishimoto gives his uh, coaches some ideas on how to uh, proceed. Yeah. Gives himself some confidence. Strings went in the racket, which is probably why he made the error. Yeah. Sure, someone who is too experienced to miss, let that missed opportunity hit the net and the attempted kill at 10 2 play on his mind. But are, we, yeah, and are we really sure about that? Because as you say, he's only got two wins under his belt. Good point. So, is he in those situations here? Nine, is he. Vulnerable on the uh, mental part of uh, playing finals when he's the favourite. That is yeah. a question mark. Very good point. It's back level, would you believe it? Ten all. Oh on a run of eight straight points. for Kenta Nishimoto to go to the mid-game interval with a one-point advantage. 2-10 down. What must have been going through his mind? What on earth has been going through someone Ho's mind? Yeah. 
he looked shocked the yeah. last three or four rallies. Yusuke Nakanishi, the other coach. Yeah, look at the body language of someone who he can hardly believe it. Well, I know all you coaches and all the sports psychologists and everything say, uh, forget that missed opportunity, forget the fact that you've had a 10-2 lead, just focus on the next rally. But quite frankly, it's almost like saying, I want you to think of something, but don't think of an elephant. And yeah, everybody thinks of an elephant. Of course exactly. you think about and it. And I had that approach when I was coaching as well, but I've been, uh, in my own opinion, become wiser since then. I, I don't want him to forget it. I want him to acknowledge it and then well, sort of be uh, at peace with it and say, okay, I can't change it. So yeah. I might as well focus somewhere else fascinating very very interesting 10 straight even points that down. is easier said than done yeah 11 straight points 13 10 Well, I don't think I've ever seen anything no, like this, no. quite frankly. Soon we'll have a speaker call where they call for the real someone who to come back <laughs> and court wherever he's gone. 12 straight points. He can't have hit the wall already, can he? <laughs> no. That, no. that semi-final. I mean, it took six minutes to get 10-2 ahead. Yeah. That's a good rally for him, for someone who... What, the longer really, rally? Yeah. So sort of get your mind off what's been going on. And that's, that's the rally. That's wide. And finally, finally, the run from Nishimoto comes to an end. Forty-seven shots. Yeah, he had a little down period there from two ten to fourteen ten. And, and I think what I was saying before is this is a good rally because I mean now he's I think back in it. He there's a very big chance that he's been furious with himself and he's become even more and more furious as. Uh, this first game progressed from 10-2 from that he was letting his opponent back in this game. It's just that uh, I mean, he doesn't show his emotions that much, uh, someone who, but that doesn't mean that uh, the feelings are not there. Yeah, absolutely. some of the things that can convince you if you're not really really strong mentally things like this these missed opportunities um, run of points for the opponents can convince you that oh, this is just not my day yeah
Yeah, it was a smash straight down the line from the backhand side of Solman Ho that did the damage. 11. It was a very accurate smash. Look at this. Nicely done. Good angle, too. Fourteen of the last fifteen points. This is all very concerning, isn't it? Oh, I thought for a moment it was someone who called for the medical turnout. No, it's a little graze, I think, to the finger of Nishimoto, and that won't stop him playing, that's for certain. Just needs a plaster. Don't argue over it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is unfortunate for Nishimoto because I have to say, I mean, he's been on such a roll that having this little medical timeout may give someone whole the opportunity just to yes, regroup, exactly. recompose the thoughts. But I'm not sure that little plaster is going to stay on for terribly long. What a palaver. We'll see out this opening game, in all honesty. No. It's going to be too annoying to play with. Yeah. yeah he's putting some, some tape on himself. It's well judged. Service over seventeen twelve. That's overdone. Eighteen, twelve. Sixteen of eighteen points. He 
he's definitely enjoying more success with his more attacking style, Nishimoto. That's been all the difference for him uh, has come. He's hit some winners himself, but also someone who has made a number of errors from below the tape on the front court. Two points away from the opening game. 19-12. Well, this has to be one of the most extraordinary games of badminton I think I've ever witnessed. <laughs> and then happening in the final. Yeah. Mistimed that, and now it is game point opportunities. Service over twenty. Into Six game point opportunities against the number six seed, Sungwon Ho. Opening game, 21-14. 25 minutes and coming from 2-10 down, Nishimoto to take the opening game. Absolutely extraordinary. Well, I do wish we'd been able to hear the coaching break. So one home talking to his coach, Coach Santozo. Oh. 
But we weren't. No question the momentum is with Nishimoto. But I'm interested, Steen, as we didn't get to hear what was said in the coaching break. What would you have said to <laughs> someone who... Yeah. We have to start all over. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure he expected to be able to win the uh, opening game for sure. But, I mean, of course, those expectations grew as he got into a bigger and bigger lead. But um, now here he's got to... Um, Playing this near side of the court, he's got to prevent um, Nishimoto from attacking too much. He's still going to play, play his um, his style where he's uh, patient, but he needs to, like Nishimoto needs to, he needs to attack a bit more from this side as well. Um, but I don't think he can totally change and go all out. So, so um, you just sort of have to keep Nishimoto honest. Otherwise, it can become too difficult for him to play with accuracy. But one of the positive things for uh, someone who is that uh, he, he's one of the players that are very good at coming back after losing the first game. What's his percentage then? It's 47 percent. Wow. Yeah, he's uh, come back to win. Eight times out of 17 times where he's lost the first game. That's a very good challenge, too. Done it twice in this uh, tournament. In the first round against... Um oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Just once this tournament uh, so was against Momota. Exactly, so the percentage is a little Two, bit less. One. Seven yeah. out of 17. Play. Still good stats. It would have been uh, in a spot of bother there, someone who had Nishimoto's smash gone over. And the bad news for someone who is that uh, Kenta Nishimoto has only lost one match this year on the World Tour when he's won the first game. My goodness. <laughs> Missed it. We haven't seen too much of the net game so far in this men's singles final. No, <laughs> no. There were so many ra uh, rallies where there wasn't really no play because in the beginning someone who won everything and then yeah. it changed to uh, Nishimoto.
Going to the acute angle, but I have to say, Steen, I was surprised earlier on in the rally with a slow drop from Song Man Ho. Yeah. I thought that was a thing of the past in men's Service singles. Over three, Trying to... Uh, we, we saw it yesterday uh, when he was playing Kenzo Momota that both players tried to make the court big for the other player because um, they played some rather slow drop shots trying to play them as close to the net as possible to make the opponent take that extra step or half step to return it he's made so many errors from um, positions below the tape uh, someone who Doesn't seem like he's going to change his style a whole lot here on the, on the side of the court. It seems like he's more confident with his uh, lift from the front court, though. But it's not like he goes for every attacking opportunity there is. There's a man beaten in the semi-final. Here to watch. Yeah, he's just stretching out his neck a little yeah. bit. Let me check you. Behind him, his head coach Tim Hay from Hong Kong, having a chat with Japanese women's doubles coach Kei Nagajima. Interesting after that rally, both players taking Service big gulps of air. Five, six. Yeah, this could this could be Nishimoto's biggest result. Yeah. So how does that affect him if he gets um, closer to winning than he is now? Oh, oh, but it's gone wide. And Nishimoto had broken strings of his racket anyway. Yeah. There were some discussions on uh, Danish television last week during China Open where there was some blocks here. And now see where someone who puts his racket up. Yeah, that was perhaps actually okay. Let's see it again. Yeah, it was okay. There was no... Yeah. Uh, that was just lucky and a little bit unlucky mm. that it went wide, but we saw some situations last week where the player put up his racket on his own side to sort of block for the Six, opponent. Four, and I, seven, I'm not five. really 100% sure of the rules. I think you must protect your own head, but you're not allowed to block your opponent's shot. And if you just... Or interfere with your... Uh, definitely not interfere. Yeah. And... W and that's open to interpretation, I think. Yeah, it's, it's not. I, I don't think you can put up your racket like some sort of little net for yourself because uh, then it will be very, very difficult to the opponent to make any other shot than directly into the racket. It's a situation that's very often discussed yeah. when it occurs. There is a rule that says about obstructing exactly. an, an opponent. Uh, those blocks to which you refer 
could be interpreted as obstructing. Yeah, it's like putting up a wall yeah. ahead of the shuttle that you have no chance of... Um, you would have to go in a very, very strange angle to return it. That's well played. Good, quick follow-up from Nishimoto. So that means I can't say that I feel he's going a little too much for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> just made that last comment partly in jest but yeah. it was also partly serious wasn't it it was serious i felt that he was going too much for it in the attack i mean as long as he keeps his uh, cool kenton ishimoto it's not like son has hurt him here in the second game so why not just um play with uh, reasonably good margin on all your shots play a lot of downward shots uh, to the front court of Song Wen Ho and then uh, keep your balance, be ready uh, on the next one. Uh, it's a different complexion if um, Sun starts uh, attacking a lot and is successful in that. Then perhaps he needs to um, to challenge. But but um, going too much for it, I feel, would be played directly into the hands of uh, Song Wen Ho. That's what he wants. Yeah. He's a great uh, counter-attacking player. There was another thing yesterday between Momota and Sonnen Ho. They had excellent defense. So accurate, both players. I'm surprised the umpire allowed that at when we're potentially just one point away from the mid-game interval. Ten, eight. Park Jabong there in the picture. He was watching closely what someone who was doing. His fellow countryman. I like that shot, even Service though he was over. unsuccessful. I liked it because it's the opposite Nine, of the uh, um, quick release cross smash that we've seen him do a couple of times. So you've got to have a um, an opposite uh, 
direction shot to keep it working. Otherwise, it would be too easy for someone who to crawl a little bit to that side where he's expecting his shot. Nishimoto, and then a brilliant backhand. Oh. Look at that backhand, that's super. It's Nishimoto who has the advantage at the mid-game interval, albeit just one solitary point advantage. Forty-four minutes into the match. Do you have a time though? Yeah, turned to give a little bow to the court before he exited yeah. Ishimoto, but not quite as deliberate as Okuhara. No, 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 no one is. <laughs> <laughs> Very polite. So just 10 points away from his first ever major title, Kenta Nishimoto. I think Nishimoto is beginning to show signs of fatigue. Yeah. It seems like he was going backwards. On his own free will there, he could have break the movement had he wanted to. Then there's some some players they just get that look really early in matches that they're like fatigued and mm. they're not really they can go on forever yeah <laughs> just looks like that it's remarkably successful in his attack in my opinion uh, nishimoto i don't normally rate him as uh, one of the strongest attacking players but um is killing attacks on someone who was, in my opinion, one of the best defensive players. Yeah, I agree. That's well played. I like his uh, change of pace there with the move back to those. Uh, Attacking possibilities in his backhand side. 
this movement. Yeah, two or three times in a row. And I mean, for someone who he basically wants him to attack, but he just wants him to attack from a little worse position than is the case right now. So a nice edge balance as well for the Korean. A bit more length on his lift, or a little bit, bit more height, but height is not so good because uh, that will give more water. Uh, more water, it's not more water. Nishimoto, more time, so mm. a little bit extra length, and um, he would be able to uh, pick the smashes from Nishimoto the way I see it. smash from Nishimoto. She made earlier, Steen, about the, the, final. the mentality of someone who in a final is, if you equate it to Super Series, is his eighth final, and he's only won two titles so far. One was um, India. Who did he beat there? Do you have that? Uh, yes, he beat Lee Chong Wei in the final in three games. And he definitely hasn't been the favourite there. Yeah. And then Hong, Hong Kong. He beat Chen Long. He wasn't the favourite. He wasn't the favourite there, and he's beaten Chen Long a number of times where he hasn't been the favourite. Yeah. just inspire him to turn this match around. What an absolutely delightful cross-court net shot played with accuracy. Two of them. One. Yeah. There was one earlier on. 30 shot rally. He had one yesterday against Momota where it was almost Momota almost stopped and applauded him and he said, okay, if you can do that, then that's yeah. nice. <laughs> I made a really good shot, but you made one that was better. Yeah. Back level. It's a challenge, challenge here from Nishimoto. Well, this one senses is crucial. Here we go. What does Hawkeye say? Yeah, caught the line. Remaining. So on a run of four straight points, this man goes back into the lead.
16, 15, play. It's so easy to speculate that 15-12 and Nishimoto was perhaps 17, seeing 15. the goal line a little mm. a little closer than it was. Yeah. But um, on the other hand, he hasn't made any terrible mistakes. He's just not um, had that little bit of luck, perhaps. Yeah, but I sense a bit of anxiety in his play. Yeah. As you say, he's so desperately close to achieving his first major title. Oh, oh my goodness, he's missed it. shot from Nishimoto there were no room for someone who fans here would love to see a deciding game my goodness he's done well to work himself back into this match someone hole after the devastation of that opening game because it's not just losing a game is it it's the manner in which you <laughs> lose a game <laughs> and when you're leading 10-2 and then lose the game to 14 must have a psychological effect hanging in there and he's giving himself a chance yeah of making it in two because now there's also not much room for error from uh, someone who that was also the case yesterday against Kenzo Momota he was hanging in there Momota doing a really good job so who was just doing it a little bit better now that's a tired looking shot to me all movement the way yeah. he lunged forward there Nishimoto Game point opportunities. Three of them. For someone hope to force a third and deciding game. the last 11 points of that second game 21 17 
57 minutes into the match and it is one game apiece. Uh, today's about the year, we to make 11 point many minutes in. Yeah, yeah. So what has Nishimoto got left? Needs to be mentally tough right now. not helping his mental state of mind. Thank you. That's probably the easiest shot. It was He's too steep. <laughs> it's that whole match. He puts it under the net. We get an indication now as to whether it was a mental thing here in the uh, later stages of the second game, or it was that um, stamina issue that um, we think we might spot, or he just very quickly looked like that and in fact has a lot of stamina left. Service over, one, all. Comeback by someone who, after that uh, first game loss. Yeah, I thought that was impressive. Service over. Two, one. Know, uh, you must have noticed as well that from 15 12, things started to go a little easier. So when you, when you feel that, then you have that kind of confidence that. Okay, I have to be really far behind before my chances is gone. Thank you. One of the fastest mobbers on the tour. Three, one. That one there. Take him to extra tournaments, I I think we should. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is perfect. Spread it down the line. Service over. 
Christine, in the second game, you talked about the fact you felt that Nishimoto was going for it too much. Yeah. How do you think he should be playing this deciding game? Yeah, attacking in the first part here as as he was basically attacking in uh, on both sides, but on, on the far side of the court, a little bit more patient. Um, because, uh, I feel someone who has a better touch on his lift from this near side of the court mm. that he's not playing at the moment here. I think he needs to be careful. That was too short, that lift there. We saw that. Yeah. So there he can inject pace in, uh, in, in his uh, footwork and his movement, uh, Nishimoto. And then I would um, take it a little bit more patient on the other side. Full service return from someone who. How did he get that? Well left. Well, once again, the player who's serving, Nishimoto in this case, didn't want to change the shuttle, but the umpire says yes, change it anyway. So that, um, I don't know, it wasn't a rule, but it seemed like everybody agreed upon it, that it was, if the server said no, then you'd have to play on, that, that's down the drain. Mm. That's no longer the case. Uh, there was a definite directive on that, yeah. I'm sure. I think there should be a directive that you can only change the shuttle if you do it within, if you do it immediately when you get it, that means yeah. when you pick it up or you get it, um, delivered to you by your opponent, then you have to take a look at it and say if you want to change it or not. Mm. And if you don't, you can't change it because yeah. it would cut down the uh, interval length in between the rallies. placement of the smash. Nishimoto getting in a bit of a tangle. Whether to defend backhand or forehand, went for the forehand, but perhaps really should have played a backhand defense. We can all be wise after the event, though. Exchange. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hardly saw any of that in the opening game. Oh, that's a lovely oh. play and control at the front of the court from Nishimoto. And another net shot off this one. That's the beauty.
Clever clears from uh, Nishimoto. Yeah, it's another grueling rally. Just explain that further, Steam. What did you like about them? I like the height of the trajectory instead of playing uh, like you normally do. Uh, reasonably fast clears and even attacking clears then he gave it some extra height um, making it impossible for someone who to jump in and um, counter attack if he wanted to do that because that's where he's most dangerous in his attack someone who not the hardest smasher on the tour but if he can sort of make this shock attack then it's um, still dangerous but given the clears and the lift some extra air Nishimoto prevents that and makes him hit a um, power smash if he wants to kill it, and uh, yeah. that's not so easy for someone who... Interesting. A bit uh, the, the tactics that we see some employer you know, try to employ against uh, Sukimulio and Gideon in men's doubles, lifting high so they can't use their speed of movement. Mm. players have some kind of rhythm in the movement back to the shuttle and here it definitely uh, fitted someone who service over seven eight it's a good rhythm yeah on his movement to that smash Level. Eight. Oh. Well, someone who has only been on court for 10 minutes longer to get through to this final across his four previous matches than Nishimoto, but that hour and a half yesterday, it's recovery time as well, isn't it? Although he had longer to recover yeah. after his semi final. Because I think there's, there's real signs now that Nishimoto is feeling the pace of this. Yeah, I mean, it would be um, most surreal if he could play with the same pace as he did in the beginning of the match. That would be um, really hard for any of the two players. So the follow-ups on uh, the attacks, if you go all out, they will be a little bit slower. Yeah. that oh yeah left stranded Nishimoto no power left in the legs to change direction Outside the court, Nishimoto wanted to towel down, and the umpire said no. I really like that because um, it's 10 8, and it might only be one rally before the interval. Exactly. And there's no rule that says just because you play a long rally, then you should be able to towel down or, or, or wipe the court. No, the physical test is a big part of our sport. All the fault. I'm sure it was the shuttle. Yeah. So someone hope. He can't believe it. This is about the only time I think I've ever seen someone hope question anything. <laughs> this is about as angry as he gets. Yeah. Well, we really need to see that again. But I don't think we're going to. Here he comes. Oh, here we go. Mm, it's difficult to tell, isn't even, it? Even in the replay, it's difficult yeah. to tell. So it's called. Yep.
Oh, yes. And once again, Nishimoto brought to his knees. Two-point advantage for the former champion, Son Man Ho. No, we can't hear him. I was hoping we might be able to hear that. Well, because I know the Indonesian coach speaks to his Korean players in English. Well, it would be nice to hear that. Yeah, but advantage at the moment with um, someone who. Yeah. Games have been won on this near side, and uh, he's ahead coming in to the last part of the game. Well, left. Unbelievable. What a rally. Super. Oh, it was a lovely net shot. I have a feeling that might be the longest rally of this deciding game so far. Thank you. Yeah, look at his movement there. <laughs> look how tired he is. This could get real loud. Mm. And even then, it's intriguing, isn't it? Because one player are getting close to winning his yeah. first major title, the other one's got the pressure because he's expected to win. And what, was it four years since he won the last title? Someone yeah. Hall? Yeah, four years ago. That's a long draft. I emphasise that's his last major title. He yeah. did win the Korean Grand Prix gold in the interim yeah, period. Yeah, Super 500 and above. Yeah. Oh, 
they're worth the efforts getting back there, Nishimoto. Give himself the opportunity to smash straight down the line. Yeah, and staying in it, uh, I mean, that was perhaps a more important point that it, um, than it looked because otherwise Son could have gone 14-11 up. And uh, mm. for both players now, it's about, I mean, if you can't pull away, then at least stay in it and give yourself a chance towards the end of the match. Another important point, isn't yeah. it, Steve? Oh! Brushed it off the top of the tape. No call from the umpire this time. There's no doubt the net wobbled. And I think that's now the longest rally of this deciding game. Oh, could just see that brush off the top of the tape. My goodness, that was good. Seems like uh, Nishimoto has managed to scratch his finger again. I don't think he minded that much now. No. Hey, look at the way he's breathing. Now take a look at this. Oh, that is perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. An hour and 21 minutes. 14, 12, play. a pained expression on the face of Nishimoto. Yeah. It's on one hole, I'm just happy to keep it going. Oh. Well, I said he was looking tired. Down, and quite possibly very soon out. Longest rally of the match, equaling the longest rally of the match. We had a rally of 47 shots in the opening game. Well, has he called for another plaster? I don't know. Oh, there's Korean teammates getting very camera shy. So now does he want some spray for his legs? Yes, yeah. he does. Nishimoto. 
He doesn't yeah. want to feel his legs anymore. No. It's the longest match he's played uh, on the World Tour this season. It's not been past 120 minutes. And it's now 124 minutes. 124. I mean, an hour and 24. I'm getting carried away with things to the, here. Uh, men's singles <laughs> record. Um. 15, 12, play. 15, 12, that was his lead in the second game. Someone who here. Sign of the small markings. Sense an inevitability about this now. 17, 12. The son just gave uh, his coach a look, and from that look, I interpreted it as if it was he knows that he's winning now. Yeah. And that's landed in as well. Three points away from a third uh, title at this Whoa. level of tournament throughout his career. Someone hope what would be a second here in Hong Kong. He's looking incredibly strong, someone who you can't see on him that he played one and a half hour yesterday and almost one and a half hour today. It's incredible, isn't he it? He looks fresh. Yeah. 19, 12. And what a contrast to Nishimoto. It was a boxing match. I'm <laughs> thinking that uh, the towel might be thrown in. But he won't give up, I know that. Oh, well taken. He has to have a little run of points right now. Nishimoto, yeah. oh, goodness me. It could have been a call default and yeah. he uh, could not say anything against it. And he's got to uh, increase his um, risk now. He's got to play sharper to the lines and to the net, so that's too sharp. Yeah. Match point opportunities for Son Wan Ho to win his first World Tour title. 20, match point 13. And he's done it four years in the waiting since he last won here in Hong Kong. And Son Wan Ho not only takes his first World Tour title, but his third title at this level of tournament. And my goodness, didn't he do it the hard way? An hour and a half yesterday against the world champion Kento Momota. An hour and 28 minutes today against Nishimoto. 
who gave his all. Yeah, smiles from teammates. A week ago in Fuzhou, it was the first major title of the year for any players in any discipline in the women's doubles from Korea. A week on, and now their best men's singles player has delivered a second title. Yeah, they've been under a lot of pressure, the Korean players. Yeah. This is the final rally. Just didn't have the stamina. Kenta Nishimoto and simply ran out of steam in the end. Well, the four-year wait is over, as far as Song Wan Ho is concerned. HSBC BWUF World Tour Super 500. Our one runner up, Japan Saibun Kentai, Kenta Nishimoto of Japan. In his second World Tour Super 500 final, Kenta Nishimoto once again has to settle for second best, but the champion once more. A second Yonex Sunrise Hong Kong Open title for Son Man Ho four years after his first. First, we have Ms. Kem Kok Fong, Vice President and Executive Director of the Hong Kong Badminton Association to present the medals. Well, what a comeback as far as Song Wan Ho was concerned, because having led in the opening game 10-2, to then lose that opening game 21-14 must have been pretty devastating. Uh, great character shown to come back to win the match. Twenty-one thirteen, deciding game. Next we have Dr. Cho Yi Kai, President of the Hong Kong Badminton Association, to present the trophies. A seventh career title in total for someone who. Mr. Very importantly, a major title after a four year wait. Now we have Mr. Chen Chi Choi, Vice Chairman of the Hong Kong Badminton Association, to present the proclaims. Oh, 
小姐問我哋雙陣紀念品。Last but not least, we are Miss Joanne Fu of the Le Leisure and Cultural Services Department. Those are the final presentations. Our maids, I have to say, Steen, it's really lovely to see someone who are back on top of the podium. It has been a long wait. Yes, and especially after the injury he suffered in uh, Malaysia Open, it's good to see him back in good shape. Yeah. And uh, we'll see him again in three weeks' time as he booked his spot for the um, World Tour Finals. Thank you, guest. And now, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause to congratulate someone. Yes, I agree with our master of ceremonies and applause for the two finalists who gave it their all today. But we can look forward to our fourth final of the day, which is mixed doubles. And it's the All England champions, Uta, Uta Watanabe and Risa Higashino up against the World Championship silver medalists, Wang Ilu and Huang Dongping.